Okay guys, so I just wanted to make a little video here to show you uh, the end of example 3 and also go over example 4 with you so that we don't have to um, do this at the beginning of next class and so that you are able to do all your homework uh, properly and satisfactorily. So uh, in last class, just to recap example 3, we came up with this model for this example of population in Kern County, California. And uh, we also had the second question, part B, said after 20 years in 1990, how many people lived in Kern County? And we came up with this answer. And so uh, part C said, graph the model using your calculator and use your graph to verify the answer. So uh, on our calculator, of course, this is actually an x value. So for us in the calculator, t is x and uh, y is y. So in other words, they're asking, graph the function in your calculator, graph this model in your calculator, and then go look on your calculator screen at x equals 20 to find your population after 20 years. So uh, I've put the calculator uh, function in my calculator, which is right here. So 330,000 times 1.024 to the x, which is the function we got right here. But instead of t, we use x because our calculator doesn't have a t unless we're doing some special kind of graphing. And so you do that, uh, graph it. Of course, you have to adjust your window size because um, we're not going to go negative in either the x or the y direction. The x direction is time. We don't have negative years. And... Um, the y direction is number of people, so we're just going to make those two negative one. But then the maximum number of years we're interested in here is 20, as we can see. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger than that, 25, because those are years. And then for people, uh, we already know the answer. We want to verify this answer, so I'm going to make my uh, y max 600,000. And if you graph this function, you get something that looks like that. And to verify our answer, we want to go to where x is 20, or t20 for this function, but in our calculator it's x, and just do trace and type in the number 20. So when you do trace and type in the number 20, you get exactly when x is 20, what is y. And that's the number we had, 530,289. We round it down because we're estimating number of people, so we don't want to overestimate. We'd rather round down to the nearest person. So 530,289, which is what we did right there. Okay, um, then let's talk about compound interest. Compound interest, big formula in finance. Uh, exponential growth functions are used in real life situations involving compound interest, of course. Compound interest is interest paid on an initial investment called the principal. So this is a big word in finance. And on previously earned interest. So interest paid only on the principal is called simple interest. So we're not working with simple interest, we're working with compound interest as in interest calculating on top of the principal and the interest that's already been accrued. So you're compounding the interest by getting interest on interest, basically is what it means. Um, <clears throat> so the formula here, this will be given to you guys, you don't have to memorize this, but this formula here tells us how to calculate compound interest for certain criteria. So P is the principal, the initial amount that I invested. Okay, so P, this is the principal. And then um, R in this case is the same as our previous example. R is an interest rate, a growth rate basically. So R is an interest rate. Okay, that's R. And then N is the number of times that the interest is compounded. Per year. Um, and then T of course is the time in years. 
and again n over here is also number of times that the compounding happens okay and then a would be the amount that's in the account after all of this has taken place so this is the amount Uh, after all this has taken place, okay, after t years, okay, that's a. So that's basically uh, the components of the formula that you need to know. If you know all those components, then you can easily calculate a, all right. So that's what we're really after: is how much money will I have after a certain amount of time, with a certain interest rate compounded at a certain frequency. And so we get this uh, example. Let's do the example and uh, see how we can do with that. So what you should do with these type of questions is just read the prompt, pick out the information, the important parts of the prompt that you need, and then you can just use the formula to solve it. Again, the formula will be given to you, so that's not really the hard part. Okay? So I'll read this with you. You deposit $5,500 in an account that pays 3.6% annual interest. Find the balance after two years if the interest is compounded with the given frequency. Make sure that you are able to graph your equations on a graphing calculator to verify your answers. Okay, so um, so semi-annually it says twice a year, so this would mean n is two. Monthly this would mean twelve times a year, right? N is twelve, all right? Uh, they might give you some other ones in the textbook. We can talk about those if you have questions about this, the different types of frequency of compounding they give you but yeah most of them should be fine for you to understand so let's look at the prompt again and see if we can pull out the parts of the formula we need so uh, i'm going to erase all this stuff just so that we can have the formula to look at uh, and then we'll talk about what are the parts we need here so uh 550 oh sorry 5500 is my amount i deposited in my account initially Okay, so that will be called the principal P, all right? So this is the amount that I start with, the amount I put in the account. And then uh, this is the growth rate. So I'm getting 3.6% annual interest. So we have to express that as a decimal. It says it right here again, express as a decimal. So we have to turn this into 0 0.036. And that would be our R, our rate, our interest rate growth rate, something like that, and then find the balance after two years. So two years, two is our T, okay? T is two. So P is 5,500, uh, R is 0.036, T is two. And you can look at this and go, okay, wait, I have principal, check. I have growth rate, check, that's R. N comes from the question itself down below, so N here is 2, so I have those two, and T is 2, check. So I have all the things I need to uh, substitute into this formula to come up with an answer. So I'm going to go ahead and just write down the formula, substitute the parts we need, and then come up with uh, the answer. Okay. So again, I'll just write down the formula, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And in our case, that's principal, which is 5,500 times 1 plus R, the interest rate 0 0.036, over N, which is 2 in our case, to the N, which is 2, times T, which is 2. And so if I do this in my calculator, you get approximately uh, 5,000. 906 and 82 cents okay so uh, if you want to know how to do that in your calculator you just go ahead and write exactly that formula maybe you could also do this I guess you could simplify it a little bit for entry into your calculator you could get you calculate this and then add them together you get something like 1.018 to the 4 and so let's see if we put that in our calculator if we get the correct thing. So let me get out of the graph here and do that. So 5,500 
I'm actually just going to enter the whole complicated mess in and see what that looks like. 1 times 1 plus uh, 0.036 over 2. And that whole thing raised to the 4. And you'll see you get the answer that we had earlier. So $5,906.82. Okay. Um, so that's that one. And then uh, when n is 12, similar thing, you get a equals p times 1 plus r over n to the nt, which is, principle is still the same, 5,500 times 1 plus r, still the same, 0 0.036 over n, this time, supposed to show you what compounding more frequently does, uh, nt is 12 times 2, okay? And again, you can simplify that down if you want. If you do simplify it, you get this, 5,500 times 1.003, and 12 times 2 is 24. All right, so just remember, uh, before I put the answer up here, put it in the calculator, we call this number the growth factor, okay, uh, in general. When we're dealing with other things besides money, uh, populations, things like that, in our other formulas, growth factor. So in other words, if the base of the exponential expression is bigger than one, things are getting bigger, so we call that exponential growth, okay? And so let's go enter this in the calculator and see what we get. If we do this one, I'm just going to enter the whole thing in again, 5,500 uh, times 1 plus 0 0.036 divided by 12 this time, and then raise that to the 24. See how this changes things, okay? So I made some more money. I made some more money. It's still only two years. Uh, what was our T? Our T was two years, still only. But I made some more money compounding more frequently. Okay, so uh, compounding more is definitely better. So this number was about 5,909.97. Okay, so hopefully that helps you guys so that you can uh, do all your homework. Um, you know, if we have any questions, we can talk about that uh, when I see you next class. Thanks, guys.